Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video where we look at what happened in Game Week 26 and then we'll have a quick look at my current wildcard plans for Game Week 27. As always we start by looking at the Midnight Mule FPL League. League code below if you've not yet joined please do join and top scorer this week was Sadir Barate. Sorry if I said your name completely wrong I'm really bad at saying names that I'm not familiar with. That's Rebelhood FC. And they scored a very impressive 89 points when the average was in the 40s. So how did they do that? They had Salah as captain for 42, Darwin on 12 and Robertson for 9. And this is not a dead team, I checked. They are actually still playing. Uh, but they still had the three Arsenal players. But there was no Rashford, which is interesting, and no Fernandez. They did have Shaw for minus 1. Apart from that, they played Ward for 11. So that was a pretty good score. And on the bench... They made the right choices look. There's nobody on the bench that would have been better if they'd played them. Top of our league is Jacob Eriksson still with Skogs Lantern IF. He scored 45 points and they wildcarded this week. Many teams wildcarded, but it didn't work out because of what you could call freak results where basically Arsenal didn't perform and Liverpool trashed Man United. So he's brought in three Brentford boys. He's also brought in three Brighton boys, but there's only one on the pitch. That was McAllister. He got 14. Kepper and Goal got six. Tony got eight. And no one else really did anything. And he had Saka as captain, as did a lot of us. On the bench, he's got the Brighton keeper, Sanchez, who looks like may not be getting any more games. So that might be a transfer waiting to happen before double game week 29. March for three. Botman for one. Trippier for one. As for me, I'm in 53rd in the league at the moment. I got 63 points. This is how my team looked. So I kept Salah. He got 21. I brought in Johnson. He got 13. That was for Enketia. Edison, 7. And looks like nobody else really did anything. Oh, yeah, I got Trent. He got 6 points. And then on my bench, Ward for 11. Matoma for 13. And then Perisic and Breno. Now, my initial plans at the beginning of the week, I would have got a lot more points because I was just going to swap Perisic for a Stupinian and I was going to keep Gakpo, who was going to be on my bench. But everyone and their dog is saying if they did nothing, they'd have done better. So I can't harp on too much and at least I kept Salah. So that's something. And the point is, even though had I not done anything, I would have done better. The truth is, I did do something. I brought in Saka. So... Uh, I did do it, as it is to say, if I hadn't done this. The reason I brought in Saka, it was a bit of a last minute decision. I really shouldn't do that, as I knew so many people were going to captain Saka and Arsenal were at home to Bournemouth. So had he done what he could easily have done, maybe get a goal and an assist or two goals, I would have been really, really punished. So that's why I brought him in as a bit of protection. So the fact he blanked doesn't really bother me because it means everybody suffered there. So I got 63 points, game week rank one point, just inside 1.4 million. Uh, overall 712,000, so that's five green arrows in a row, so that's very nice. As you can see, I'm now 17 points outside of half a million and 21 points in front of the million mark, so that's nice. Gradually moving up there. And the next three game weeks, I'm currently intending to play chips all three weeks, so hopefully I get another three green arrows with those. 558 subscribers. Funny story here. I put a video out last night which took me ages to put together and I had 555 and I checked back later and I was down to 554. So I'd actually lost a subscriber. I don't know if that was just somebody cleaning up their YouTube subscription list or if I offended somebody or maybe someone who was already subscribed subscribed again and that of course unsubscribes you. But I'm on 558 now so that's actually a green arrow. So thank you to everyone who does subscribe and does leave comments and does like. It is appreciated. FBL Game Week website, they have a content creators league where they've put together a load of content creators who have at least 10,000 regular followers and put them in a league. And when you look at the website, you can see where you'd appear. So top of the content creators is currently FPL Harry. And then someone else who I follow and see what they say on Twitter is Ben Krellen. He's in fourth. I'm finally back in the top 50, which is nice. There I am at 49th. So I'm one point ahead of Mark Southerns. You may recognise him from FPL Blackbot Stroke Scout. I'm one behind James from Planet FPL, who's one behind FPL Salah, who's one behind FPL Heisenberg, who's two behind Andy from Let's Talk FPL, who's one behind Big Man Bacar. 
So I'm finally on the page of this lot. They all had awful weeks. And all but Mark at the bottom there played their wild card. So it'll be interesting to see if they're going to be taking penalties minus fours where hopefully I don't need to. But who knows? There, I've got a couple of major differentials. We'll come to my team in a minute and they may cost me a lot of points. So my transfer last week, Johnson and Ketia was fine, but Saka for Gakpo, that was stupid. And because it cost me minus four, I actually lost three points on that. And because I'm wildcarding this week, that's three points I'm obviously never going to get back. So my wildcard team for game week 27 is a 4-5-1 formation. Everyone is getting in Tony, which is the right thing to do. A lot of people are captioning him. He's going to get an awful lot of points. And so, of course, at the front, I have Haaland. I'm not going Tony. He is a transfer waiting to happen. But more importantly than that, game week 29, I don't fancy the uh, the fixtures. Away to, I think it's Man City and away to Brighton. He could blank both of those quite easily. Whereas I could have instead a different striker who's going to um, get more points than Tony. So I think Tony's not going to be the top scorer by a long way in game week 29. And after that, I don't really care for Brentford players. So that is a big risk by me and it's quite possible it's going to cost me a red arrow if Tony does really well this week. I do have Brentford players though. I'm going to have Raya and two defenders. Not necessarily Henry and me, but that's who I've got at the moment. Maybe Pinnock could be in for one of those. Now the next big decision, Brighton have a double game week of course. And it's obviously we're going to get a stupinion. And then of the three midfielders, they're all great, but which two do we get out of Matoma, March and McAllister? And online there are polls running on Twitter and people making arguments for each one. And it is a tough decision. And so I decided I'm going to go for all three and have no Brighton defence. <laughs> so if Brighton have two nil nils, that's going to cost me a lot as well. But who knows, maybe they're letting goals and these three do really well. There's so many good arguments for each one. I don't know which one we're going to go with there. And as you'll see from here, March is down as my captain. So, no, yeah, March currently got the old mule hat and I've got McAllister as vice captain. That may change. But one of those three will almost certainly be my captain. One of those three will almost certainly be my vice captain. As for the other players, I have Trippier at home to Wolves. He seems pretty safe. Rashford at home to Southampton. That should be okay. And then Liverpool, I've got Trent and Salah away to Bournemouth. So I think that looks all right. The only main weaknesses in this is I don't have Tony. But who knows? Maybe Haaland a score at Crystal Palace and we'll be all right. And then on the bench, ready for game week 29, I've got Pope, Felix, Johnson and Chilwell. Now, I know a lot of people haven't gone Raya and Pope. A lot of people might have gone maybe Raya and either a Brighton keeper, which is a tough call just now because we don't know who the Brighton keeper is going to be properly. Or else maybe Raya and Kepa because you can swap them around quite a bit as the fixtures go on. But I like to have a keeper and just stick them in there. And even if they're away for a difficult fixture, just keep the same old keeper. So after this week, Pope's going to be my main keeper. That's my current plan anyway. If Newcastle continue to let in goals, maybe that'll change. But that's the current plan. So there we have it. That's my plan for wildcard game week 27. Tony could well cost me. Oh, and another. I said there were two differentials. The other one is, I have no Arsenal. <laughs> uh, oh, nearly every engaged manager has Arsenal. And so they should. They've got some very nice fixtures coming up. But I'm wildcarding next week. So it's only game week 27 and game week 29 where I don't have the Arsenal players. After that, I'll probably bring some back in. Thank you very much for watching. All the best for game week 27. Bye.